Black, woman. The intersection of being black, female, and an immigrant is not always the easiest place to be. But for me, it represents strength, regality, and determination. Even when facing the daunting reality that VC funding for women is less than 2%, and for black women, that number is an abysmal 0.34%. As many of you know, for years, we've been working diligently on the next iteration of Highbrow Hippie. Our long awaited, and dare I say, game changing product line. Being a black female immigrant without generational wealth, along with being a massive introvert who battles anxiety, I often found myself in meetings with potential investors feeling I couldn't advocate for myself properly, even though I know my capabilities. I was tired of being seen and perceived as only the hair colorist and not the brain. Welcome, this is Majesty Sussex Report and I'm Antonio. Welcome once again. Thank you for spending some of your valuable time with us. Don't you just love, love, love a success story? But not only a success story, but knowing that it's success for good people. You know what I mean? Like sometimes we see people who, <laughs> in all honesty, we go, can't believe like this person is so lucky or um everything is going so easy for them and they're such jerks i can name one <laughs> and i'm sure many of you can already name one son of a gun that seems to have a horseshoe shoved up somewhere or maybe made a deal with someone anyways enough about that let's just concentrate on the positive so the beginning you heard the first two paragraphs of a story um of katie lee and i hope that's the way her name is pronounced um if not please please correct me and i tried to read the rest and i couldn't <laughs> i couldn't get through the entire thing without getting really emotional um, so I, after like the second time trying to read it through, I just thought, okay, enough. So instead of me, let's listen to the rest. So at the beginning of the new year, I applied to join an accelerator group comprised of 25 female entrepreneurs and founders of all stages. From how to manage a cap table to the difference between a safe and convertible note to whether to raise an angel or venture round, no stone was left unturned. The program culminated on Tuesday in NYC, with the top five companies pitching in person to a group of venture capitalists and investors. I'm still shocked to say that out of 25 incredible businesses, I won the entire thing. What? When my name was called, my jaw literally hit the ground. I know the win is just a small step, but when you've been fighting for your ideas for so long and have felt pigeonholed and or erased from the room so often, you just need a sign that things are going in the right direction. And I didn't do it alone. I had so much help and encouragement from my business partner, Micah, Lizzie, who runs our operations, and so many dear friends. 
Today on International Women's Day, I'm so thankful for programs like Dream Ventures and hopeful that Highbrow Hippie will continue to defy odds despite the roadblocks that exist. I'll also continue to keep my eyes wide open to the reality that Black women and women everywhere face when chasing and funding their dreams and big I just dreams. absolutely love it, don't you? Just love it, love it, love it, love it. So let's get into the story and um, information I took from uh, People's People Magazine. And um, we have Meghan Markle, the Duchess of Sussex, recently celebrated the launch of her close friend and hair colorist, Katie Lee's new highbrow hippie hair care and wellness line at Tilina's restaurant in Venice, California. The event highlighted Megan's ongoing support for women-led sustainable ventures, where she is also a lead investor in Lee's brand. During the launch, Megan shared a personal and relatable moment, revealing that she used boxed hair dye <laughs> during the pandemic before meeting Lee. This humorous anecdote elicited laughter from the audience and showcased the bond the two women share. Megan also presented Katie with a heartfelt gift, roses from her Montecito home garden, symbolizing her deep admiration and friendship. Katie, um, Katie Lee, known for her work with high-profile clients like Julia Robert, Roberts and Gwyneth Paltrow, became Megan's go-to hairstylist following the um, following an introduction by celebrity hairstylist Serge Normand, who styled Megan for her 2018 wedding. Over the past four and a half years, Lee and uh, Megan's professional relationship blossomed into a close friendship underpinned by shared values of empowerment and support for BIPOC businesses. The launch event was a lively celebration featuring music from a gospel choir and joyous atmosphere. Megan described as being in a joyful mood. Remember, she said it. This is her joyful um, era. Um, <laughs> Dance and sang along with friends, including her makeup artist, Danielle Martin, and Tasha, uh, founder of Vicky um, Sue. This friendship um, underscored the theme of creativity and community that define the evening. Highbrow Hippie, co-founded by Lee and her business partner, Micah Harris, aims to address the root causes of hair loss while promoting healthy aging um, of hair. Megan's support as an investor aligns with her broader portfolio of female-led sustainable brands. The event marked another step in Lee's journey as a trailblazer in the beauty and wellness industry strengthened by her relationship with Megan, who continues to champion meaningful causes and innovative entrepreneurs. This celebration not only spotlighted Lee's accomplishments, but also reflected Megan's ongoing commitment to uplifting women, fostering creativity, and investing in ventures that align with her values. I love it. <laughs> All right, everyone seems to have had a really good time at the launch. Now let's take a look at the product. Don't you just love how the presentation, the bottling of it is? I just love it. I think it's it's really beautifully done. Absolutely love it. Um, the first bottle, those are the um, the um, capsules. That's the essential wellness complex. Uh, it sells for about uh, one hundred and eighteen dollars. And the Root Replenish Active Growth Serum that sells for about $88. Now, you can get the two as a combo, and um, it's for $206. I mean, not a bad price, right? Um, if you're thinking like upmarket a little bit, but also for what it's being marketed as, right? And, and you know, some people may say, you know, there is no no price on on healthy hair, and especially if you have hair that is falling out, or you you do a lot of coloring and 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 you know putting your hair through a lot of products and so on. I mean, 
giving it the nutrients and the stuff that it needs in order to um, stay alive it's, it's, it's essential and some may say you know there is no price to that so not not bad at all now um, uh, Katie Lee is is does has as everyone in Los Angeles um, has representation she's represented by um, I think it's called the wall agency and um, so on on her um, come card it says that um, Katie Lee is a Los Angeles based hair colorist Lee currently counts Julie Roberts uh, Olivia Coleman I love Olivia Coleman um, Brad Pitt Megan the Duchess of Sussex Maggie Jalen Hall um, Kelsey um, Clements Amber Vallietta, Rose Leslie, and um, Siguni Weaver, Alicia Silverstone, and a whole bunch of other people as her um, clients. Um, Kristen Davis also, and Chris, um, K- Kristen Davis was at the um, at the lunch party. Uh, she's done um, her work has featured on the cover of publications such as Vogue, Elle, Paper, Harper Bazaar, In Style. Vanity Fair, so on and so on. She's done campaign uh, for brands like La Lancome, CoverGirl, L'Oreal, Blue Marine. Um, this is just amazing. Amazing. Good for you. So happy for her. So, 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 so happy for her. So in other news, um, Prince William is currently on a solo visit to Northern Ireland. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really worrisome. He's on a solo visit. It's, you know, he's, he went to South Africa alone. He's been doing these royal engagements alone. I, I, I don't know. I am worried about his marriage. I really am. I'm worried about this professional separation between him and the Princess of Wales. I, you know, we haven't seen them together quite often. I I know that it's being said that she, you know, has gone through chemotherapy and all of that. Uh, for pre-cancer cells so it wasn't really cancer it was pre-cancer um, but she's all okay there was a video and she looked great in the video also you know in the forest and and, and all of that she looked fantastic she she showed up at um, the remembrance day and again you know, they were at the Royal Albert Hall together. He was very, looked very, very, you know, concerned to make sure she was okay and all of that. But I'm still kind of worried, you know, still kind of worried that um, this professional separation, right? Anyways, we will find out eventually what's what's going on. I mean... I know some people may have a count as to uh, how long they've not been seen in public together. I don't have time to do that, but some people may. You guys get my my sarcasm there, right? <laughs> it took a lot for me to do that. Um, anyways, he was actually visiting um, in Belfast University, um, the Ulster University in Bel- in Belfast uh, November 14th and he was booed going in booed coming out but I wanted to just show you folks a little bit of what actually happened inside so I guess now um, he is on TikTok because a student that was late for um, I guess one of her classes made him do a TikTok with her um, as a note to our professor just saying this is the reason why I'm being late to the class because you know I'm here waiting to meet Prince William 
So I guess all that fuss about, oh, royals don't do this and royals don't do that. Remember? Do you, do you folks remember when when someone wanted to take a selfie with, with um, the Duchess of Sussex at one point and, you know, there was a big kerfuffle? Oh, the royals don't take selfies. Oh, the royals don't do this. How dare Meghan Markle even... Like, it's amazing that all the things that the Royal Rhoda and all these so-called experts in protocol and all these people who were just damning Megan for closing her own car door or for heaven's sake for for like having a smile during Remembrance Day when she was speaking to a veteran. Uh, all of these things now that they condemned her for, right? The whole thing about, oh, too much PDA. Now, all of a sudden, all these quote unquote working royals are, are showing more PDA. They're like taking, doing, doing TikToks, um, being part of selfies. I mean, the, the, the heir to the throne, he, he's broken every protocol there is lately, like every single one for, 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 for which they had crucified Megan for. Gosh, the irony, the irony. So over the last decade, um, the university has helped grow um, the creative industry sector in Northern Ireland, which is estimated to contribute about 1.4 billion pounds to the local economy and employs more than 24,000 people. So, so it's really, really great what they're doing at the university. William also met um, James Martin. Uh, Martin, who became the first actor with Down Syndrome to win an Academy Award when he was recognized for his role in the short film, An Irish Goodbye. So they met as he's also, um, James also received um, an MBE. So the Prince of Wales sort of jokingly said to uh, Martin, oh, I recognize that, pointing to the, the medal. And there we see the prince, you know, being a macho, macho man. I want to be a macho man. So that's, that's, that's the prince being a macho man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or 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 pretend James Bond or something. I don't know. Um, and you know when he left, they sort of booed. But also there was some protests there um, in regards to what's happening in Gaza. Sticking with uh, film and that sort of industry, um, Gladiator 2, which I can't wait to watch because I'm so excited about it. Um, Denzel Washington was in London to premiere the, well, the cast was in London to premiere the movie. And um, King Charles was out. And supposedly there was like an awkward handshake and um, they wanted... Denzel Washington to go in um, because usually when there's something like this, the the cast will line up and the, the royal um, whoever's attending, whether it's the monarch or whomever, they go down the line basically and shake people's hand and so on. But um, Denzel Washington was busy speaking with fans and they wanted to hurry him up to get, get inside to meet Prince Charles and he kind of didn't want to be hurried up because he was speaking with fans. But anyways, um, it is said that they had a bit of an awkward handshake or whatever. And um, so King Charles stepped out solo for his um, 76th birthday. Um, to a, Hang on a second. Hang on a second. What's happening with these people? So Prince King Charles also solo? Hmm. There might be a separation there, eh? What do what do you folks think? I'm I'm worried about these um, royals because is um you know rumor has it, my sources tell me that 
since they returned back from Samoa, the king and the concert have not been seen together. So would this be a professional separation, you think? I think so. I think, I think we're seeing another professional separation. I mean, it could be a romantic separation too, but my sources tell me that, um, you know, the concert is, is not very happy because of the way she was portrayed in some media. Um, so, you know, this might be it. This might be it. This might be the professional separation and a romantic separation. I mean, sources tell me she already doesn't stay in the same palace. I mean, those are what the sources are saying. But who knows? Who knows? The other thing, too, what's with the horses? Like running away, getting like spooked out and all of that. So they they were doing the whole, um, you know, when they do the, the, the 41 gun salute thing, they were, they were the they were doing the the gun salute for King Charles's birthday, and it was close by Buckingham Palace, and they were go they started, and the horses just went crazy. One or two got away. I want to know what what did these horses know that they're trying to tell us? Because you folks remember the horse that was like running downtown London, all like in blood or whatever. I don't know. Horses know things. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Uh, could this be another s professional separation? I think, I think the horse, go with me on this, okay? <laughs> I can't keep, I can't, I can't. Oh, I'm so stupid sometimes. <laughs> so silly. But here's what, here's my bid. Here's my bid, okay? The horse, the horses are having a professional separation from the artillery and all of that. They want freedom to do their own thing, to roam around London, go shopping at Hermes, that kind of stuff. So, I just think we should just normalize professional separation from that one. Period. Okay, so I just got a cable here. Um, yeah, we are old fashioned. We receive cables. Or what does that thing call again? A. A. Da, 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 and it is signals. Da, 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 da. Is it telegram? No, that's not a telegram. Da, 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 da. Whatever it's called. So, um, Roya, Ro, Roya Mika just sent me a message via signal. Um, Prince William and Kate Middleton are like two teenage, two teenagers in love. Prince William and Kate Middleton are still very into each other. Despite all odds, according to Roya Mika, the Royals editor of the Sunday Times. When you see them on engagements, they're obviously still very into each other, Mrs. Mika told Fox News. One, one's always looking out for the other. Recently, when they were in so bored together you could see that she was in a bit more vulnerable i think they've got each other's back <sighs> are these people are they just gaslighting us because i think when they sit down to write this stuff they just watch a bunch of videos with Harry and Meghan. That's what they do. So they look at Harry and Meghan together, Harry and Meghan doing stuff, and then they write whatever they need to write, right? And then they just replace the name 
Harry and Meghan with William and Kate. That's what they do. Because, I mean, let's be honest, even for the derangers, let's be honest. Kate Middleton and Prince William have never, never been touchy-feely the way Meghan and Harry are. It's not until recently because they think as for their PR person that they need to do that, they've been like choreographing how they touch each other, how they look into each other's eyes and all of that. <laughs> Listen, Roya Mika, thank you for the telegram. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, I've got another telegraph or telegram coming in. I don't know. This seems like these royals want to correct correct my statements. Okay, King Charles reveals what brought him to tears recently. King Charles this week revealed that a new 90-minute documentary on <clears throat> Queen Camilla made him cry. The film titled Her Majesty the Queen, oh boy, Behind Closed Doors, highlighted her work raising awareness about domestic and sexual violence. It's very moving, isn't it? I think BAFTA, the British Academy of Film and Television Arts, are interested in it, Charles said, according to The Telegraph. I'm very proud of it, he said, adding, it reduced me to tears. Well, 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 thank you for sending me that. So I guess they don't have a professional separation. Now, here's my thought on that, though. Is, is Camilla really the right person to be highlighting that? This is a serious, serious topic, right? And the woman who is... Uh, I don't want to get into it because you folks know already what I'm going to say. Like, she's not the right vessel for something as, as serious as domestic violence and sexual violence. Like, I, I, I know they're all trying to, 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 I don't know, present to all of us the new them. But... I don't know, give her something else. Garden and manure. How to make your garden better with horse manure or something. Like, honestly. All right, and here comes another telegram. Who is this one from? Anonymous. Okay, anonymous, anonymous. But it's from the palace, right? Oh, you can't, you can't tell me? Well, wh what does it say? From the palace, right? Okay, perfect. Okay, from the palace. Let me see what it says here. Meghan Markle in a joyful mood after professional separation. Oh my gosh. Really? Really? Meghan Markle was in a joyful mood amid ongoing professional separation from Prince Harry. People Magazine reported citing a source. Who is the source from the palace sending this crap? She was dancing and celebrating with her friends, the source added. Are they talking about Megan at the launch? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what? I, I don't want any more telegrams coming through, all right? This is whoever's in the palace sending these telegrams. No, thank you. Here is, here is, here is one of those things that you read and, and you really you really start to solidify your opinion about a person, right? It's like, it's already solid, but now it's like really, really solid. So Ricardo Eden, he, this is what, it, okay, I'm just going to read it. Why royal insiders fear King Charles is forcing 
loyal Prince Andrew to do a Harry and Meghan. I don't even need to know the rest of this or or anyone tell me or read it. Just the thought that he would put in the title of whatever he's writing, right? Because I think this has to do with the whole thing about either the king wants him to 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 leave Royal Lodge or that the king is going to like, I don't know, stop finance insecurity or giving him money or whatever they decide to do or whatever they tell us that they're actually doing because it doesn't mean they actually do it. Loyal. Of all things Ricardo Eden could write there, loyal. I mean, I would say something else rather than loyal. But then again, as in my last, the last episode, as I indicated, right, the secrecy within Britain, the royal family establishment, the aristocracy, that essay and all these other things happen, but you're supposed to remain quiet and silent and you're rewarded for your silence. Gosh, what a messed up bunch of people. Messed up. All right, so we have some update here on um, Prince Harry's um, court case. Um, Prince Harry and Tom Watson, only people continuing case against the Sun publisher. The Duke of Sussex is one of two claimants whose claims are still live hmm, against the publisher of The Sun over allegations of unlawful information gathering. His barrister has told the high court. A hearing on Friday was told that Harry, 40, and former Labour deputy leader Tom Watson are now the only people continuing their claims against news group newspapers, NGN after several other settled their cases. The court was told 39 cases have been settled since a previous hearing in July. The two remaining cases are expected to go to trial in January 2025, with Harry um, alleging he was targeted by journalists and private investigators working for NGN which also publish the now defunct news of the world. The publisher has previously denied unlawful activities um, took place at the Sun. Many others have settled their claims in recent years, including actor Hugh Grant, actress Sienna Miller, ex football player Paul Grosny, uh, comic Catherine Tate, uh, Spice Girl, Melanie. Wow. I also read and I, I can't I can't find where I I I read it. Um but I believe that the court has approved for um uh, Prince Harry to be able to listen or to read all of the communication that they have between the palace and the sun um newspaper. So that would be interesting, but something tells me that there isn't going to be a lot there because I'm sure, right? I mean, I wouldn't bet my life on it or anything, but as per what we can deduct, that a lot of this stuff has been deleted, buried, swiped away, gone 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 so i hope i hope there is stuff that is still there that they were able to still have that he can listen to and that the his attorneys can listen to and and, and read and so on because you folks know what we all want we all want the same thing <laughs>
It is my pleasure to introduce Amada with an original song for Queen Marsha. On this day, the stars align. A queen was born, her spirit shines. Marsha, oh, your name we sing from the house of Williams, joy. is kind, a beacon strong, a soul refined, through every trial you always rise, with grace and strength that touch the sky. of William shines in your embrace a heart so royal a soul so true the world is brighter because of you through life seasons you've shown the way a queen in spirit every day with laughter warm and courage bold your legacy is pure as gold the house of williams stands so tall because of you who lifts us all your love's a light that never fades a timeless glow through life's cascades Oh, Queen Marcia, crowned with grace The house of William shines in your embrace A heart so royal, a soul so true The world is brighter because of you so here's to you, our queen today A life so vibrant, a golden ray With every smile, you build a throne In every heart, you're never alone Oh, Queen Marcia, crowned with grace The house of William shines Once again, Amara. Let's go everyone, it's time to celebrate. The stars align and destiny awaits. Born on November 15th, she shines so bright. Queen Marsha Williams, our guiding light. She was born on November 15th, and we look to the stars above. They whispered, Scorpio, Scorpio, full of fire, strength, and love. Scorpion queen, fear. 
fierce and true Marsha Williams, this song's for you You are water flowing deep Mysteries in your soul you keep Mars and Pluto rule your skies Passion and power in your eyes Resourceful, brave, loyal and strong Determined to right every wrong Magnetic spirit, resilient soul You transform the world and make it whole She was born on November 15th And we look to the stars above They whispered Scorpio, Scorpio Full of fire, strength and love Scorpion Queen, fierce and true, Marsha Williams, this song's for you. Deep red, maroon and black, colors that mirror the strength you track. Your birthstones glow, topaz, citrine, symbols of warmth and a royal sheen. You stand for transformation's art, a warrior queen with a fearless heart. Your intuition protects your kin, a beacon of light that will never dim. Marsha, Marsha, we call your name A queen who's bold, never the same Your power, your grace, your love divine A legacy written in the star's design She was born on November 15th And we looked to the stars above They shouted, Scorpio, Scorpio Full of fire, strength, and love Scorpion queen, fierce and true Marsha Williams, this song's for you Marsha, Marsha Williams, Scorpio Queen, forever wins, born to shine, born to lead, a royal soul the world will need. Well, on behalf of all of us here at Majesty Sussex Report, everyone, from all the members, all the subscribers, we wish you a very, very happy birthday and hope you celebrated grand yesterday and hope you're still celebrating today because birthdays are not just for one day, they're for a weekend or an entire week. So hope you're having a grandiose time a wonderful wonderful time happy happy birthday and we extend birthday greetings to every and anyone also celebrating in this month of november we wish you a very happy birthday and hope if it's past already or if it's coming up to take some time to celebrate you okay celebrate you in whichever way makes you happy. Celebrate you. You are fantastic, you're marvelous. You are worthy of celebrating you. Thank you everyone. And um, this is it for today's episode. Um, we are on Sky Blue. So if you are on Sky Blue, please um, come and follow us there. It's exciting that this new platform is there now. I'm also looking at another platform um, that is uh, black owned. So hopefully it's more sort of like an Instagram kind of platform. So I'm going to check it out. And if I think, you know, it'll be cool for us to have, then I'll sign up and it is black owned. So that's fantastic. Have a fantastic, fantastic rest of your day, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Just take some time, be kind to yourself and be kind to your loved ones and be kind to strangers, even though sometimes they're, you know, we may not want to be, <laughs> but we need kindness in this world. Big hugs to each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Let's go everyone, it's time to celebrate The stars align and destiny 
awaits Born on November 15th, she shines so bright Queen Marsha Williams, our guiding light She was born on November 15th And we look to the stars above They whisper, Scorpio, Scorpio Full of fire, strength and love Scorpio Queen, fierce and true Marsha Williams, this song's for you you are water flowing deep Mysteries in your soul you keep Mars and Pluto rule your skies Passion and power in your eyes Resourceful